5.7, the cosine law. Cosine law. If you remember the cosine law from grade 10, that was the last one you learned because when you're trying to solve sides and angles and triangles, the first thing you always look for is whether or not you have a right angle triangle, in which case you're going to use Sokotoa rules. Then you're going to look for sine law, so that X pattern that we looked at in the last lesson. And finally, that doesn't work. It's going to be the cosine law. Cosine law works when you have side angle side and cosine also works when you have side side side. Now the formula that you may remember and hopefully you do starts with a Pythagorean relationship a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Everyone knows that you learned it in grade 9 and then you subtract 2 b c cos of the angle that you're starting with the side length. So these have to match A's and A's. Now, if the angle was 90 degrees, this all would become zero and you're back to Pythagorean relationship. Isn't that magical? The other thing that you would have needed to remember when you're doing your uh, calculations is that all of this has to be done together. This is probably the biggest mistake I see with people using the cosine law they forget to make sure this is minus all of this. You can do it in your calculator if you just plug everything in without stopping. But sometimes people will put in b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c equals, and then they'll hit the equal sign in between and then do times the cos of a, which of course is all wrong because you're subtracting all of this that's multiplied together. So just be really careful that you don't make that mistake. Now the other thing that you could be asked for when you're using side, 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 and you're asked to find an angle, it means that you need to rearrange this question or this equation so that you're solving for the cos of a. Now the easiest way to do that is to bring minus 2bc cos a to the other side of the equation so that you have this 2bc cos a plus a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared for your first step and then you bring the a squared over here and subtract it so I'll have b squared plus c squared minus a squared and finally you would divide by 2bc leaving you with the cos of a so cos a equals this divided by 2bc and those are the two formulas that you need to know in order for you to find either an angle or a side length. Okay, so putting that aside, what I, my next plan is to do two of the more difficult questions. First one's pretty easy. The second one, even the solution manual doesn't give a very good um, description of how it works. And so just stick around, make sure you stick to, around to see the more difficult questions so that you can figure it out later on your own when you need to do one for a test or something like that. So this question, 325 number seven, give you this little triangle and they asked you to solve for um, a B so this length here we're trying to solve for and they do tell you that it is 2 from here to here so when you're working with any trig question fill in as many other pieces of information as you can before you start that's the easiest way to maybe get a better plan for what you have to work with so I know that this is a supplementary angle so this has to be 135 degrees. And I know that this, they tell, told me that D was the midpoint, the midpoint of BC, and then it cuts these into two equal parts. So if this is two, that means this side length from D to C is one, and from B to D is one. Now, knowing that I want to find this side length, so I would have side, for the big triangle ABC, I would try to find this side length. I have this angle, but I would need another side length. So I have side angle, and I want to find this side length. It's the only one I can find given this information because I don't know what this angle is. I don't know what this one is, but I can tell you what this angle is right here because in triangle ADC, I have 165 degrees, meaning this has to be 15 degrees up here. So now I can use the sine law to find the length of AC. We'll call it B because that is the side length. So B over the sine 
of 135 degrees is equal to, now this length DC here is 1 over the sine of 15 degrees. So using the little n pattern, so I'd say b is equal to this times this divided by that. So b is equal to the sine of 135 degrees times 1. Uh, we'll put it in. Divided by the sine of 15 degrees. So if you do that on your trusty calculator, let's bring it up here just so we have... So we have sine 135 divided by the sine of 15. And I don't know if you can see that, but it says approximately 2.73. 2.73, and it's approximately. So now that I have that this is 2.73 units, now I have side, angle, side, and I can use the cosine law to find this side here, which we will call side C. So let's put that over here. C squared is equal to, now remember what I said, you just write the other two out here, A squared plus B squared, minus two of those things, 2AB times the cos of C. And my A here is going to be two. My B is 2.73. So 2 times 2 times 2.73 times the cos of C. C is 30. And I'm just going to skip, cut to the chase here. I've already done this question for you somewhere else just to find the right answer. And this comes out to C squared is equal to approximately 2. So that means C is approximately equal to the square root of 2, which is about 1.4. And that's how you find the length of AB. AB, in this case, would be C. Okay, now let's go to the really tough question. And that's this one here. It's number 8 from your homework assignment. I'm sure your teacher will assign it because it's just one of those questions that makes you think real hard. So it says two forest fire towers, A and B, are 20.3 kilometers apart. From tower A, the bearing of tower B is 70 degrees. The ranger in each tower observes a fire and radios the bearing of the fire from the tower. The bearing from tower A is 25 degrees, from tower B is 345 degrees. How far the nearest tenth of the kilometer is the fire from each tower? Hooray! We got through reading it. Now, what you want to do when you're reading a question like this for homework is like make a little sketch first because sometimes you'll run out of paper. Do something on the side just to see if you can figure out where you're going. Now the other thing you might not be familiar with in grade 11 at this point is what a bearing is. So I'm going to sketch for you how this bearing stuff works. So let's say we have, I'm going to write it over here a little bit. Let's say we have this, this, and a bearing you need north, south, and east, east and west. Okay, so I'm going to make it like this because I've already sketched it and I know it's going to have to go up pretty high. So this is north, this is south, this is east, this is west. And it says, let's say this is tower A here. We always put A in the center of your compass. And when you do a bearing, you measure a bearing from north in a clockwise movement, 70 degrees. So it says tower B is 70 degrees... So I'm going to go over this way so that I have an angle of 20 degrees coming up from A, like this. And my tower B is going to be over here. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter or else I'm going to run out of room. Okay, so here's my B. And this angle in here is going to be 70 degrees. So bearing means from north clockwise. So here's A to B, and A to B is 20.3 kilometers. So far, so good. So we've got A and B 20.3 kilometers apart. We've got the bearing proper 70 degrees. The ranger in each tower observes the fire and radios the bearing of the fire from the tower. The bearing from tower A is 25 degrees. 
So that means I would go from here, 25 degrees over. So let's say something about here, about 25 degrees. Oh, I knew I was going to run out of room. Let's make it a little bigger. Just so I go like this, 25 degrees. Looks much bigger than 25, doesn't it? So the bearing to the fire is 25 degrees from tower A. And from tower B, it's 345. Okay, so how do you measure the bearing from this one? Well, doesn't matter where I'm standing, north, south, and east, east and west is always the same thing, right? North, south, east, west. So I'm going to make another set of coordinates here. Now make sure, make sure you um, draw those on because this is going to be really helpful to you. Now it says the fire is 345 degrees from tower B on a bearing of 345. So this is my north and I measure 345 degrees around from here. So all the way around 345, that means I'm 15 degrees away from this axis, right? Because that would be 360 if I went all the way around. So 345 is something like this. And I'm gonna make it a little bigger just so I can make it neat. So like that. So that means this is going to be 15 degrees in here. 15 and 345 makes 360 okay so that's the bearing here all the way around like this was 345 degrees okay so we've got that all set up and we know that the fire is right here so let's put some red stuff here there's my fire okay now we have to figure out how are we ever going to figure out the some measurements for this triangle because I know that once I get the triangle set up, I'm going to be I'm going to be okay. So obviously, if from here to here is 70 degrees, and here is 25, that means this angle in here, and I'll do it in red, has to be 70 minus 25 or 45 degrees. Okay, now remember that these quadrants that are made from um, a compass points, compass points are bearing are at 90 degree angles, north, south, east, west, same thing over here. So I have this is 45 degrees, I have this side length. Now if I could just figure out one more angle, then I could figure out anything from this triangle, right? I can find those two lengths if I have angle, side, angle. So how do I figure out this angle from here to here? What's this angle going to be? That's my problem. So when you have north, south, east, west, and you have these lines, these lines would be perpendicular and parallel. So they're perpendicular to the east, west, but they're parallel to one another. If this is north, that's north. North is, it could make all kinds of lines here and they would be north. And maybe, just maybe, once you figured that out, you can figure out for me how I'm going to figure out this angle. Now, do you remember something from the good old days of um, uh, when you worked with parallel lines and you found angles? So if I turn this this way, for instance, and I do, um, if I do this, this, and this, you might recall that that's what we call a Z pattern, the Z pattern. So I'm going to make it dotted like this, and then like this, and then like this. So I know that this angle and this angle have to be the same. So this angle and this angle. And I know what this angle is. It's 70. Right, so if that's 70 degrees there, this has to be 70 degrees down here. And just a minute here. So from here to here, bing, bing, bing. So that's 70 degrees. This is going to be 70 degrees. I believe, I believe. Okay, so we have parallel lines. If this is 70, then this is 70. Now, how far is it going to be 
in here? Well, we know this one's 15 degrees. 15 degrees here. And 70 and 15 make 85. So how far is it from here to here? So this is going to be 180 degrees minus 85 degrees. So I add these two together, gives me 85. This whole thing is 180, and 180 minus 85 is going to give me 95 degrees. And that's how they get the 95 degrees. If you were trying to figure this out on your own, you might have gotten just a little bit lost. Okay, so now I can swing it around here, and I have I have a triangle here, this A, B. We'll call this F up here for fire, A, B, F. And you can see we have um, 95 degrees, 20.3, and 45. So can you tell me what this angle is up here? Well, you should be able to add these two together. 90 and 45, that's 140 from 180. That means this angle up here has to be 40 degrees. 40 degrees, 45 is 85, and 95 makes me 180. So I'm trying to find A to F and I'm trying to find B to F. So I can use the sine law. This isn't even a cosine law question after you set this all up. So I can say that the sine of 40, sine of 40 degrees, that's this one, over 20.3 is equal to, now take your pick. So you could say the sine of 45 over, over, we'll call it FB. So from the fire to tower B is going to be sine 45 degrees times 20.3 divided by the sine of 40 degrees. And then you get out your trusty calculator again. Let's clear it up. So we get sine 45 times 20.3 equals that divided by the sine of 40. And I get approximately 22.3. So the nearest tenth of a kilometer. Okay, so that's F to B. Now if I want to know F to A, I do the similar similar work it's still sine law um and so i have the sine of you can start the same way i already have those two sine 40 over 20.3 is equal to the sine of 95 degrees over a f now remember how to do this so a f or f a we'll call it a f this time it's going to be the sine of 95 degrees times 20.3 over the sine of 40. I think the hard part here was getting those angles, especially this 95. And if you don't, if you didn't think about um, the Z pattern, you probably would have been just a little bit lost. And your textbook doesn't give you much help on that one. Okay, so I get this one is approximately 31.5. And then you make a nice concluding statement. Therefore, tower B, tower A is approximately, don't forget your units, 22.3 kilometers from the fire. And then we can use nice little dittos here. Tower B is approximately 31.5 kilometers from the fire. Okay, so I hope that helped you out. These are, um, this is probably one of the trickiest questions in that section, and uh, hopefully that helped you. Give me a thumbs up, sign up, say something, let me know people are out there reading and watching and learning from me. Thanks, bye.